If you're looking to gather up a little more detailed information about the state of your analysis services environment, and in particular, the queries that are being issued against uh, either your multidimensional cubes or your tabular models, then SQL Server Profiler is a pretty good option. Um, what I've done here is just to start up a brand new trace, simply called My Trace. Uh, nothing has been specified yet, just uh, other than saving it to a file. But once you make a connection through to your analysis instance, uh, then you do have different options available when it comes to your events selection. So I haven't configured anything yet. This is all entirely in its default state. So if we go to the events selection, this is what's here normally by default. And very common things like query begin and query end are certainly useful. That tells you how long a query takes to process, of course. Uh, but various other options, of course, are in there already. But if you really want to get detailed, we can hit our show all events. And if we scroll through now, you'll see that there's a lot more detailed information about query processing. So we can calculate non-empties, uh, calculate evaluations, DAX query plans, direct query if, if you're using that mode, uh, MDX script begins, script current, script end, get data from aggregations, get data from cache, Query queue begin and end. Let's throw that one in uh, for the sake of argument. Uh, I mean, dimensions, subcubes, all these kinds of things, uh, you know, really, really useful uh, information when you're trying to optimize uh, and or maybe troubleshoot what's going on with your queries. Uh, resource governing, if you have that set up, you can find out what kind of throttling has been implemented. I mean, there's just obviously a lot more options here. So, you can uh, you know, include whatever you feel is necessary, but once you start running this, we'll let that make its connection. So there it's basically ready to connect or collect data. So let's switch back to our browser here, which I already have open, and let's just fire some queries at this cube. Now, again, I'm only obviously a single user pulling out some pretty simple data. Uh, you know, this isn't going to be much of a hit against the server, but even with just that, you can see there's data already captured. Uh, so we can basically go with this. Let's just stop this right away. Uh, and if you go through the results now, you can see that we've got all kinds of information here. Uh, once the ex existing session has been established, we see all kinds of options here. Uh, there is a query begin statement. And not only does it give you the information here with respect to the start time, the current time, the duration, the database name, all of this stuff in, in here, uh, it actually tells you the code down here that was issued in that statement. So it's very useful to figure out what has actually happened against that particular cube. So I can review the code, make sure it you know seems to be appropriate, and there I can see again my, my begin and end statements and the query end and all of that information all in there. So, uh, you know, it can take a while to, to filter through all of this, of course, uh, but resource discovering, uh, uh, or excuse me, resource usage discovering beginning and ending here as well. So these are just coming out in XML format, but uh, I mean, you can basically ascertain an awful lot of information as to what's going on when you are using your SQL Server Profiler and capturing up that query type of data. Now, you probably, you know, obviously would not let this run for a few seconds like this, uh, but at the same time, you don't want to let it run for days on end, obviously. Uh, you need to find a happy medium for gathering up enough information and, of course, what is going to be useful to you. But uh, certainly the, the basic statistics of when a query starts, how long it takes to process, uh, all of those kinds of things. And you can also capture, of course, who requested it. Uh, so you see the domain name and things like that, and we could have included the username as well, whether or not any parameters were requested along with it. Uh, and as mentioned, the actual code itself is included in the capture. So maybe you can find problems from there, particularly when you're simply trying to troubleshoot something that's happening from a front end. You don't know what the, what the users are actually wanting to select. Uh, but this tells you the actual code that was issued against that cube. So a very useful tool for, again, just gathering up that, that statistical information and finding out what's going on behind the scenes when you want to uh, troubleshoot and optimize your MDX or tabular queries.